when Moses went up to Mount Sinai, and uh, he was overwhelmed by the ministry and the mission God has given to him. Uh, because his mission was to take Israelites to the land of Canaan. And he already saw miracles as God delivered his people out of Egypt. And he was just astonished. But however, as we know, the, these people, they were not obedient. Constantly, they were challenge God and they challenge Moses' leadership. So on the mountain Mo, uh, Sinai, Moses was contending before God, God, unless you go with me, unless you go before me, I cannot lead this people. And then as he was contending before God, and there was one particular prayer he said to God. And this prayer was so amazing as a human to ask God Almighty, the creator. And this prayer was, show me your glory. Show me your glory. For a mere human being, the sinner asking, holy God, show me your glory. It's impossible. It's almost like, how is it possible God who sits on the throne of God and millions and billions of miles away and us living on the earth in this small pocket of world that we fight one another and we constantly fall and we are so fragile, we are so small and we are so small even to greater degree as an ant sees a great giant elephant if there's a great vast difference between two, two uh, entities, more so a mere human being asking God Almighty, show me the glory. But God answers that prayer. And God said that I will hide you in the cleft of rock because you cannot see me. No one has seen my face because if you see my face, then you'll perish. So what I'm going to do is I will hide you in the cleft of the rock and when I pass you by and proclaiming holy, holy is God and I will pass by you and I will hide you in the cleft of rock and you will see my behind and you will see my glory. And according to his promise that God revealed his glory to Moses. And from that point on, he was able to fast 40 days. When he fasted for 40 days, not only he did not eat any food, but he did not even drink water for 40 days. It's impossibility. It's impossibility. In the top of the mountain, in the wilderness, the sunlight is scorching on human souls and all the animals. And for 40 nights and 40 days, not only you are not eating, but you are not even drink, drinking a single drop of water. It's impossible. But maybe because he was able to behold the glory of God and that glory, that spiritual feeling and the strength and power was so magnificent that he did not even have to eat or drink on the mountain Sinai. And when he came down from the mountain and people were able to behold the reflection of God's glory from the face of Moses. And that itself was so astounding. That was so fearful. People were not able to see straight the face of Moses. So they said to him, would you cover your face with a towel? So he did. All of us have that desire. We want to encounter God. We know his Love is limitless. His glory is all-powerful. His presence is so thick. And there's an inner desire, inner longing that all of us want to see the glory of God. And we want to pray that prayer. And during my own fast for 40 days and also in recent days, this has been my own prayer. Show me your glory and shower me with your love. And I repeat myself with this prayer. Show me your glory and shower me with your love. If God answers this particular prayer, I will be content and I will be satisfied that I will be able to see his glory moment of my life and also in my heart that he showers me with his love, that I'll be so satisfied 
and I will rejoice in the Lord. But how do we receive and how do we behold His glory? How are we able to see His glory in our life? Simply to put, it is by faith. By believing in Him, we are able to see His glory. And we want to take us to the book of John chapter 11, where Jesus said, didn't I tell you, if you believe, then you are able to see my glory. So let's turn our Bible to the book of John. I want to recap with you the background of this Bible verse. is a book of John chapter 11, verse 40. If we can read it together, let's begin. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, believe that thou shalt see the glory of God. I'm sorry, um, as, as you can see, I lost about 45 pounds and I regained about 15 to 20 pounds. Praise God. <laughs> um, after I began to eat, and within four days, I regained the 15 pounds. And I said to myself, man, in this rate, by 10 days, I will regain the entire 45 pounds. But uh, fortunately, by his grace, it's been about 22 days, but still it lingers between um, 15 to 20 pounds. Uh, so I'm regaining the strength, the physical strength. It's not fully restored. But one thing, uh, it's a still it's a really low is my sight. Um, when you do a 40 day fast, sometimes my teeth will like move around because you have no nutrition, no uh, protein, nothing. And my sight has gone. And you know how I used to, I was able to read the passages from that screen, now I can't. And when I drive, the, the street signs are that I cannot read, especially at night, I cannot read. So I just uh, drive the streets that I know Assuming that's a street that I'm making. Please do not report to police. <laughs> so my sights have not been restored. And, and I'm sure when I eat, begin to eat a Korean barbecue, I have a sights restored. But anyways, we know the story, how this goes. Jesus was uh, uh, residing with his disciples on the other side of the river of Jordan. So that's where the nation of Jordan is. And he will hear the news. Well, his beloved Nazareth was sick on the west side of the river of Jordan. That is nearby the Bethany. And it's about two miles away from Jerusalem. And he hears that news. But instead, he will reside there for two more days. Because he heard the report of Nazareth is dead, and he loved him. And original language, he loved the Nazareth, loved, it was not agape love. Not only he loved him with the agape love, but with a phileo love, with a friend's uh, love. He will, he will have an exclusive love towards Nazareth. Because every time he visited Jerusalem on the way and through the Bethany, he would visit Nazareth and Mary and Martha. And that much, he had a strong friendship with Nazareth. And if he heard that he was a sick, immediately he would go and visit him and lay his hand and heal him. But instead, he stayed for two more days. Why? Why? And when we read John chapter 11, verse 4, this is what he says. And again, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. He says that this sickness is not unto death. Because people thought, Nazareth, if Jesus does not come sooner and heals him, he's going to die. This sickness will soon become death, misery, and suffering, and loss. And calamity will happen to my life and death will come to my life. But Jesus says, no, this sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. 
This sickness is not unto death, but the glory of God will be revealed through this sickness. And he delays two more days. So this is a lesson in our life. Sometimes we cry out unto God. We pray to God. But it seems like God is delaying the answer to my prayer. Why is I am suffering more? When God gave a vision to Joseph, this amazing vision was to become preeminent person. He was not only to rule the nations, but he was to rule his own brothers. Even his mother and his father would bow down before him. But what was happening in his life was completely opposite way. He gave the vision to be preeminent, but his own life was going down to tube. Uh, completely opposite ways that he was put into pit by his brothers. He was sold as a slave. Not only that, he was elevating a little bit, became the governor of the house. Then he was misunderstood and he was imprisoned. What is happening? And year after year, nothing is happening. And my life entirely going opposite way. Why God? Why do you allow that this sickness is so delayed that I feel like death is approaching into my life? Death is consuming my own life. Why God? And we have absolutely no idea. And Abraham was like that. When he was 75 years old, God will give him promise that you will have a seed and your seed will be so innumerable like a stars in the sky and like a dust on the seashore. But for 25 years, he will not have a, own, a single seed coming out of his womb. And in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 17 through 21, and let us read this. And he says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Father of many nations. 75 years old and becoming 100 years old. And his body becoming like a dead before him who be he believed. Remember, he want to see the glory of God. Abraham wanted to see the glory of God and believed that the promise and even God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though there were. God will be able to quicken the dead. Even God will allow sickness in our life and death likeness. But we must believe behold, to behold his glory is that he is able to quicken the dead. Maybe God will allow Death in my life. It's just like a Nazareth. Jesus purposefully delayed two more days to reveal the glory of God. And in our life, sometimes 25 years of waiting patiently and sometimes multiple trials and sufferings. But yet, Abraham believed because he believed that not only God quickens the dead, but he will call those things out of nothing. From nothingness, he creates something in our life. He is the creator who against hope, he lost all the hope against hope, yet he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which has spoken, so shall thy seed be. He held on to the promise, still believed against the hope, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. By 100 years old, his body was now dead. God allowed Nazareth for two more days delayed. For Abraham, he allowed 25 years of waiting until his body, being 100 years old, completely dead without a single seed yet. But yet his promise is, you shall be the father of many nations. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. This is absurd. And when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb her womanness has stopped. It's impossible. The woman thing, the thing you know, well, you know, you know what I mean, it stopped in her body. Then it's impossible for you to conceive a baby. But yet, against hope, he will believe. And he staggered not at the promise of God and through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that 
He had a promise. He was able to also perform. Not only he gives us a promise, but he also is able to perform that. So God delayed 25 years. So between two days and 25 years, that's the scope of our waiting and the patience. And God will test our faith. Are we being staggered against all odds, against all hope? Am I going to choose to believe in his promise and believe in his goodness and faithfulness? Or am I going to be staggered? Am I going to give up? And am I going to throw the towel and say, God does not answer. He doesn't love me anymore. He's not faithful. Maybe all other people, he may answer their prior prayers, not with me. He rejected me. He has forsaken me. No, absolutely not. Even so, against all hopes, we still believe. Why? When God allows from sickness to death, the Nazareth was a sick, but God allowed it. To, for him to die, it is why, what is a missing link? That is to reveal the glory of God. And that glory of God will be linked with our faith. With a faith that we are able to behold the glory of God. And it's astounding things. It's astounding things. So repeat after me, please. This sickness is not unto death but to reveal the glory of God. This trial is not unto death, but to behold the glory of God. This waiting is not unto death, but to see the glory of God. Anything, it seems like a delay. Anything is going against our hope, against our faith, against God-given promise. Rejoice. Why? Because God will allow death-like and from there, He's going to reveal His glory. And He's an expert on it. It's so astounding. It's so astounding. When the Israelites were chased by Egyptian soldiers and army, and they were right in front of them, it was a Red Sea. And they were captured. They, were, they had nowhere to go. Nothing. And we are to die. And they came to Moses. Didn't we say to you that we were sufficing to live in the land of Egypt? Even though that we toiled, even though the captivity, even though the bondage was strong. Leave us alone. Didn't we tell you? Why did you bring us out so that we can be all perished in the Red Sea? And that moment, God said through Moses, wait upon the Lord and see the salvation of God. When we seem to lose all hope, there's no possibility, options ran out, and human resources are all gone, and that's a perfect time in God to show and reveal His glory. Only if we do not lose the faith, and at that time, Moses was crying out because he also was so burdened and he was being accused by the people. And there he cried out to the Lord, Lord, save us. And God said to him, why are you crying? Why do you cry unto me? Stretch your rod towards the Red Sea and I will reveal the salvation and glory of God. And that's what he does. How do we behold his glory? That's by faith. And this kind of faith is not instant faith. It's not a prompt and momentary faith. It's an endurance. It's a mode of trusting God. 25 years of waiting and patience. And faith has been molded and all the sharp edges being chopped off. And continually trusting God and believing on his promise. And sometimes we fall. Sometimes we lose off. Yet by his grace. He holds my hand. And lift me up again. And infuse me with his grace. And strength. And I can hope in God again. And here and there. When I lose hope. He shows me sign. He shows me, shows me sign. And sometimes it may be 10 years. Or sometimes it may be 25 years. But in due time. When we do not lose a heart and faith, he reveals his glory. And it's so awesome, so awesome, because we become addicted 
to see His glory, to Jesus, to see His glory. Couple of things that we must remember to see His glory. One thing is His time and my time are different. That's one thing we must understand. Because Martha and Mary, they saw and witnessed Jesus healing all other people so instantly, whether blind or lame or deaf or demon possessed, they witnessed Jesus' power and instantly he healed them. And they couldn't understand why this is a delayed. My brother is a sick to death and why isn't Jesus coming? So we become frustrated because my timing and his timing are quite often different. So different. We are so instant. We want it right now. We don't understand why it's being delayed. Then we doubt his love and we doubt his goodness. But his timing, my timing is so different. Because if we really want to see his glory, because when there are human resources still available, his glory is not going to be revealed. Why? Because when we try with our resources and our options and our strength, then when things are done, we cannot see his glory. We will not glorify his name because we will brag about ourselves. It is by my strength. It is by my might. This was possible. But when all other resources run out and God had waited, God had to wait until Nazareth dies. God had to wait until this woman with a blood issue for 18 years to spend all her money on doctors. And doctors gave up on her. And there, Jesus visited her on the way to raise that girl up. And she touches the garment and is able to see the glory of God. So God's timing is to wait until Abraham's body becomes dead and Sarah's woman thing disappears so that glory of God may be revealed. It's by his power, not human resources. My father was a womanizer. It ran in my family line and I became a small womanizer when I was in college. In my life, after I became, not Christian, 18 years old, always I had a woman surrounding me. In college, if my friends wanted to hang out with the girls, they had to call me because I had all the resources. And that was like me. And after I became Christian, this was the one thing I had to deal with me. Because his plan was to make me a pastor. Imagine I'm a pastor and I have the spirit of womanizer. Oh, this will be chaotic. This will be chaotic. Such chaos it will that be. So God had to root this out from my family line and out of my heart and out of my life. And I'm crying. I became Christian when I was 27 years old. And for 12 years, all kinds of prayer, 100-day prayer, 40-day prayer, early morning prayer, night prayer, three times a prayer, a week prayer fasting, another week fasting, and three days without food, without water, nothing worked. God, where are you? There are 3.5 billion women out there. How come all my cell group brothers who are younger than I, and I'll be wedding coordinator for them, and sometimes 10 weddings I will do each year as a cell leader. But why not me? What's happening? Did you deject me? Am I going to Die being single? Did I commit so much sin? Yes, I did, but <laughs> I saw other brothers who sinned more than I, and they seemed to live a happy marriage, and God redeemed them. Why not? Because deep inside, still, there was a mindset that such a thick, sticky pride if I want it, I can get woman I want. If I can just move, if I decide, I can get any woman I want. That filthy male prostitute-like ego that is so thick, so sticky, and will not go away. 
And God had to wait and wait and give up and totally surrender and say, if God doesn't allow, I will die as a single brother. And that came to realization and surrendered. And it took me 12 years, 12 years, my manly ego to die. And I was 39 years old and I got married and I've been married now another 12 years and I'm happily married. Praise God. All 12 years, it seemed like it was all lost. And God will begin to quickly repay those years that I seem to lose. Quickly, my wife will begin to be pregnant and will have a four children. <laughs> so single brothers and sisters, <laughs> surrender. <laughs> Let your ego die. <laughs> your timing and God's timing is a totally different. Totally different. And second thing that we must remember, his ways and our ways are totally different too. His timing and my timing is different. And not only that, his ways and my ways are different. Because Martha and Mary, when they reported it to Jesus, they have observed how Jesus healed them. But his ways were different. And even to raise a dead person up, sometimes he would go to a girl and just hold her hand and raise her up. So this time, when he approached the tomb, and there was a Nazareth inside a tomb, and people probably imagined, oh, okay, he will roll the stone and go inside and touch his hand upon Nazareth and, or hold him up. And that will be the ways. No, this time it was totally different. He didn't even touch the cover, the stone. And he commanded other people to roll the stone away. And from outside, from the distance, to a person who's been dead for four days, his body was stinking. And God had to wait until our life stinks to the nose of our friends and surrounding our people. And surrounding our people will say, he lost the hope, but there's no hope for him. When that happens, Jesus calls us. Nazareth, John, Cynthia. I don't know, Cynthia came just to my mind. Come out, come out. And Nazareth came out. The way was different than people expected. So that's a different, that's a different. Since I talk about singlehood, remember this. Sometimes brothers and sisters, oh, I've been with the EM for a few years. I check out all the sisters. I know how they are. And I have no interest in them. So let me go to a different community. So you decide to go to Sarang Church. <laughs> so you go there for a few months. But... When you are in Saran Church, you move to your community, and to EM, an amazing brother comes and fetches a sister, and he marries your friend. Oh, no, what, what have I done? So you decide to return back to GMI EM and left the Saran Church, and within that few months, and there's a wonderful brother sent to Saran Church and fetches another sister and marries. We need to let down and let go of our own scheme. Where we are, we be faithful, wait upon the Lord, and trust His promise. And because His ways and our ways are so different, and we have our own ways and our own understanding and logic in our head, and so stuck to it, and when we cannot wait any longer, and when we become impatient, then the scheme comes to our mind. So human efforts are in gear, in full gear, and we try, and we become anxious, but we delay his timing because we expect his ways to be according to my own plan, but it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. In my group that I was overseeing, there are some wonderful sisters, and I thought, there will be some potential sisters, and I absolutely had no idea my wife will be a sister with whom I had a non-communication. 
with a grace encounter for the first time, I conversed with her because she asked me a question. And other than that, for three or four entire years, one conversation that I remember with her was after worship in the atrium type of fellowship, and I said to everybody, does anyone have a gum? And no one replied except for my wife. And she said, I have, but it's in the car. Let me get it for you. And I thought she liked me. That's how brothers are. That's how men are. So don't be too nice to brothers. That will mistake you. Sometimes being called to Christian brothers is, is, is a brotherly love or sister's love because he doesn't make a mistake or misunderstand your kind of conduct. Let's remember, if we desire to see his glory, two things that we must understand. As we patiently uphold faith, because only faith will lead us to see his glory. But two things that we must understand as we wait for him is that his timing and our timing are quite different. But when his time comes, his full glory will be revealed and his ways and our ways are quite different. So how is up to God? And let's lay it down before God. When environment, when we look at the wall, thick wall is right before us. And we see no opportunity. Nothing will happen. But God has multiple ways to come to pass. And Abraham's body, Sarah's body, both were dead. But he overrides human system. He overrides our culture. He overrides our logic. He overrides any human scheme, and he can still pull it off because his ways are higher than our ways. So let's all pray. At the cross, when Jesus breathed last breath, he said, Ella, Ella, Labak Samakdani. As a human being, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't say, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? He was a mere human being, embedded with all sins, and he was calling out God. And after he breathed the last, what happened? The earthquake happened, sun became dark. And people were confused and panicked and fleeing left and right. And dead corpse will rise up. It was chaos. It was chaos. At that moment, let's pause. Earthquake, dead corpse rising up. People fleeing left and right. And some being dark. And the Messiah, the hope of the world, the Savior of the Lord died. And it was all over. No hope. Nothing to proceed anymore. And silence came. He was put in the tomb. Nothing for the world and human beings. And on third day in the morning, the glory of God shows Jesus is a reason. In our life, sometimes when the trial happens, Serious trials will simultaneously happen, just like at the moment of last, last breath of Jesus. Earthquake, sun darkened, people panicking, and accusation, mocking, and all these things are happening. What's happening? I'm dead. What is happening? Hell has become loosened in my life. And all darkness, all are shaken. The silence comes and the morning comes. He's a reason again. The glory of God is revealed into our life. When no one expected, not even his disciples expected that Jesus will rise again in our life.
People may mock us, accuse us, and chill at us because my life stinks. There's no hope. I reached the dead end. There's no hope. There's no way God can pull it off. Alas, that's the perfect time. And His ways will be so amazing. Let's believe. Let's strengthen our trust in Him. He quickens the dead and He calls things from nothingness into amazing things. And this God we serve. Let's call His name in our life. Are you going through series of sufferings? And God is delaying His answer to your life. And you are being misunderstood by other people. You are being accused. And so many years you prayed for certain items and God has been delaying. But this sickness, this waiting, this suffering, this pain, this trial not is, un, is not unto death. But the glory of God will be revealed. So let's call the name of Jesus three times and pray. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Dear Jesus, help me.